and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your Call, proudly brought to you by Quit Now. This is where we have a look back at some of the umpiring decisions from the previous round. To help me work our way through that, as he does every Tuesday afternoon, he's the umpire's manager, Jeff Geish. And welcome, Geish. Good to be here again, Wayne. Uh, I'm going to jump into the decisions very quickly. Now, importantly, this is where you get to have your contribution across any round throughout the 2012 AFL season. All you need to do is type in the Twitter address, at AFL, hashtag, hashtag your call. Pick out a decision and we'll pick out two across the course of the weekend. Let's get stuck into it, Geesh. And uh, it concerns the Gold Coast and Fremantle game. Very tight affair and a scoring review uh, in the second half. I want to get your thoughts on. Yeah, very tight call here. We can see it from close range and the player kicks the ball hard and high towards the goal. The goal umpire thought it was a goal, but he just wanted to get some help here. It happened so quickly he wanted some help, so... He comes out, he says, I think it's a goal, but can you just check which side of the post? So this is still inconclusive. Yes, that's the speed of the ball. Correct. And because of uh, the fact that we haven't got an opportunity to freeze frame and slow it down, mm. very difficult for our people in the box. Um, so the umpire's um, goal review person in the box went back down to the umpires and said, look, it's inconclusive. So we went with the umpire's call. Now, to show you how difficult this call was, Back here at, uh, you know, AFL um, Headquarters. Media, yeah, we had to go through this very, very carefully. Look at it. We see that we changed the ball to pink. We see the pink and then we see the ball disappear and mm. then it comes out the other side of the post. So it wasn't until we had that elaborate technology used by the boys down here that we were able to make a really strong call about that. But on the day we went to umpire's call, he thought it was a goal and what a great call it's turned out to be. And after, you know, spending half an hour, 40 minutes down here today, we can confirm he made the right call. Yeah, it was a great call in the end under trying circumstances. For those who may not know, though, how much time do you allocate for a score review? We get about 40 to 45 seconds. They ask us to try and get it done quite quickly. So we try and get it done quickly. But it does put a bit of pressure on in the box. But where it's inconclusive, we simply just go back and say, look, we can't tell in that time frame with the vision we've got available. You've had 30, 31 scoring reviews so far. How many have we got right? We've got uh, 30 of those correct, which is terrific. We would have liked to have got the other one right. But um, what it is showing, though, generally the umpires are pretty right with their calls. But mm. we have used the technology to help us out on a number of occasions. All right. Let's have a look at our second decision. This one concerning the Adelaide Crows' gutsy win against the Swans. Yes, and this is another very tight call. And I suppose look at the scores, look at the time. An incorrect decision here can really have an impact. So, again, our goal umpire thought the ball scraped the post. So he comes out and says, I think this ball has skimmed the post. Can we just check? So we go to the uh, score review and it comes back. And this bit of vision here confirms again what a fantastic call by the goal umpire. It just snicks the post there. So from that, our people up in the observer's box were able to say quite clearly, it has scraped the post, give it a point, which is what occurred. And it kept the game alive. It certainly did. A gutsy win by Sydney. Just before we move on to our next decision, do you want the umpires actually making a decision prior to going to the score review? Yeah, definitely. The whole process around this is we want our umpires to have the confidence to make a call, come out and tell the field umpire what they believe so that we've got a bit of a feel beforehand so that if it is inconclusive, we can go back to the umpire's call. And um, on those occasions that we just saw, they both went back to the umpire's call. Well, I think our next decision is pretty uh, conclusive concerning the same game, Rory Sloan. Yeah, and look, we've been really strong about being tough on deliberate out-of-bounds. We want the players to keep the ball in play. We can see Rory here. Of course, he's under pressure, but he's handballed hard and long and forcefully towards the boundary line and gave the umpire no option other than to say, mate, you've put that out-of-bounds deliberately. So, correct free kick was applied. Absolutely. The next one we'll have a look at. This is the first of our two Twitter nominations. This one's from Carly. And it's a great nomination, Carly, concerning why wasn't there a 50-metre penalty here played to Robin Nahas. Well, Carly, you know, good on you. You're right on the ball there. Um, unfortunately, though, it isn't a 50-metre penalty to Nahas because the rule states that an opponent is allowed to follow his opponent through the mark. And on that occasion, uh, we can see the Port Adelaide player clearly following his player through. He's within five metres, so that's permissible. No 50-metre penalty. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Carly. Our second Twitter nomination is from AJ this weekend concerning Fremantle and the Gold Coast. Jonathan Griffin involved. Yes, another good call from our uh, Twitter followers here. Um, quite clearly, we can see Griffin jump up, take the ball. He's had a prior opportunity because it's a ruck contest. Now he must kick or handball the ball. We can see the umpire 
blindsided by that and he makes an error in that department. We can see here what you can do. We see Higgins grab the ball, handball it straight away. That is permissible. But clearly, the first one that we saw there was an error by the umpire and that mm. he was unsighted. Um, Griffin didn't handball or kick the ball when he took the ball out of the ruck and tackled correctly. All right. Uh, this one is the hot topic. There seems to be a hot topic every time we have you in the chair. Yeah. There's a perception from those in the eastern states <laughs> that West Coast Eagles players are using a technique to slip underneath the tackle and drawing high contact. Your call. Yeah, look, I'm just looking at these ones we're seeing now, and we've watched these very closely over the year. Look, I think we can see from these that the umpire in all of these cases had no option to, to pay high contact. On all these occasions, the contact has been high. Uh, yes, the player might have moved a little bit. The players with the football are entitled to try and evade the tackle, but they've all been clearly high, and the umpire's paid free kicks for those. So we're comfortable with those, but we understand... Uh, you know, this outcry at the moment about what the Eagles are doing, but we think in these cases the umpires correctly paid free kicks because they've all been taken high. Generally, though, Geese, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's high contact, you don't see players ex ex accentuating the high contact. In a number of those bits of vision there, West Coast players are making sure that the player, the umpires are seeing the fact that they've been taken high. I mean, it's yeah. difficult at the best yeah. of times. Yeah. Is this becoming an increasing problem for umpires to adjudicate and get the decisions right when they are exploiting the rules as opposed yeah. to legitimately getting hit high? Yeah, look, I wouldn't say the West Coast are exploiting the rules here, but what I would say is I agree with what you're saying. I think that when they do get taken high, they're accentuating the fact mm. and showing everybody that they have taken high. But I think Wayne players have been doing that over the ages, whether it's a push in the back or whether it's a chop of the arms or whether it's a high contact. We see the players often let the umpire know clearly that they've been infringed. All right, we've got uh, the final piece of vision, Hawthorne St Kilda on the weekend. I'll let the vision roll, we'll hear the umpire's explanation and then I'll come back and get your thoughts sure. on it. Expect the unexpected with Saad. And they were right. Look at Cyril using his head as a human drill. Scott yeah, let's go, 50. And 50 against Polo. I, I initially thought the duck, but you've come straight into him and got him high. That's why I paid it, all right? If you're standing still, I, I can understand. You've run into him, it's high, all right? Well, I actually think that Brian Taylor got that absolutely right with his description. He got it spot on. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, we can see Cyril take the ball. We can see him duck his head and run straight into Polo. We can see Polo's feet planted, so he certainly wasn't moving towards him at that stage. What Jacob Mollison said, the umpire, mm. was spot on in, in the way that we interpret it. He actually said, you know, you're moving, or I thought you were moving. But in terms of what happened there, he wasn't moving, his feet were planted. But our interpretation is, if the tackler is moving towards the player, even though he might have his head down and ducking, if that player's moving, we still want to pay a free kick. But if he's stationary, like Polo was, it should be play on. OK, uh, great description there, and uh, certainly a contentious issue at the moment with head-high contact. It's always a busy week. We look forward to uh, perhaps an easier week for the umpires next week. And importantly, recognising last weekend was the umpire appreciation round. Yeah, it was good. It was a great weekend. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you coming in, Gish. Thanks. And importantly, we also appreciate Carly and AJ's contribution this week. All you need to do to get your nomination up for consideration for each weekly edition of It's Your Call at AFL, hashtag your call. And that's as simple as that. We'll pick out the best two, and Geesh and I will work our way through that. Have a great weekend. On behalf of Quit Now, signing off from It's Your Call.